Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14. And I'd like to share verse 2 with you. And then let's talk just for a few minutes today about how we are set apart for the Lord. So if you would, hear the Word of God. You have been set apart as holy to the Lord your God, and He has chosen you from all the nations of the earth to be His own special treasure. Now, friends, we know that since this is in the Scriptures that this is not just about Israel in that day. Uh, God God's word is, is friends fulfilled. Jesus is very clear about this, that, that the Old Testament is not abolished. He didn't come to abolish the law, he said, but to fulfill it. And so we know that God's word is fulfilled in Jesus. So ultimately, this is pointing to the redeemed in Christ. We read this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 10, and I'd, I'd encourage you to, to keep in, in mind the words of Deuteronomy 4.2 and see how, how similar this sounds and how you can hear the, the fulfillment in Jesus Christ. So we read here, You are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into His spiritual temple. What's more, you are His holy priests. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. As the Scriptures say, I'm placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in Him will never be disgraced. Yes, you who trust Him recognize the honor God has given Him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word, and so they meet the fate that was planned for them. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation. God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of the darkness and into His wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. So we know, friends, that we are chosen God chose to offer salvation to humankind in Christ Jesus. God, the God who stands above time and history, that God, the one true and living God, saw us and knew us before we were born. That God who sees the end from the beginning knew that we would yield to His pursuit of us, knew that we would receive Jesus. He knew that we would take his hand as he called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. And not only that, God has chosen the church to be his vehicle of grace, his conduit of the gospel to the world. And so we know that we are, as the scripture says, God's very own possession, his special treasure. So with that in mind then, friends, consider um, how it is that you protect something that you have that is valuable, a valuable possession. You lock it up, you hide it away, you put it somewhere safe. But then let's go one step further because of course you are more than just a mere thing to God. Let's think then how is it that you would protect those people who are yours. You, I would be willing to bet, would fight for them. You would die for them. And if that is true of us, we who are imperfect, how much more is that true of God? But of course, He did die for us. 
Jesus Christ went to the cross for us, and there he proved his love, the scripture says. He proved God's love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so we are his, and he is ours. He is our God. We are holy, that is, set apart for him. Holy being not just friends about behavior, about following commands, surely it is about that, but it is more. It is about being, first of all, set apart. Set apart from the world, set apart from the secular and the profane, set apart for Him. We devote ourselves to God, give ourselves over to Him, that He might have us, that He might use us. We yield to His will and His way. 1 Timothy 2.9 says, but you are not like that, for you are a chosen people, you are a royal, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, listen to this part now, you can show others the goodness of God. I can't imagine, friends, a higher vocation, a greater calling. I can't imagine a greater responsibility than for those of us who've experienced the goodness of God who know the great love of God in Jesus Christ, who know the truth of the gospel and have put our faith in Him. I can't imagine those of us who know what it's like to be God's treasured possession. I can't imagine a greater responsibility that we owe to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, that we owe to the world that He loves, than to share His goodness, to share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, May we truly be set apart for him, laying ourselves in his hands, saying, Lord, I am yours. Use me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And friends, till we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that he would keep you.